London, England, a hub of English culture with its vast history, landmarks, and people. Yet England has become synonymous with something that has captivated its people for centuries. That thing is called football, and England's passion for the game is globally well known. But how is it that this game became what it is in England today? It is most difficult to determine the origin of when football, the modern game we know today, truly began. The reason for this comes from how we wish to define the game itself. Ball games have been a part of English culture for hundreds of years, but the first recognizable versions of the game we know today arrived only recently. The term football was coined in the year 1314 and was played throughout England and parts of mainland Europe. However, this football would only bear a slight resemblance to modern football. Each local area in England developed its own local game referred to as football, so that many versions of the game existed in this period. Football would be around in England in its different forms, but no substantial progress was made in the sports development until the 1800s. Football was also divided because the aristocracy in England were able to send their children to schools where they would play organized football, whereas children of commoners developed football as more of a street game until it was banned by Parliament in the Highway Act of 1835. The reason football developed in the 19th century is due in part to the Industrial Revolution taking hold in England at this time. Communication was at an all-time high with the introduction of railways. The reason this acted as a catalyst in football's development is that the isolated versions of football began to meet when people from different areas would play together. This was especially true at universities where boys needed to develop common rules in order to play together. This need for common rules also appeared when education became more accessible to commoners and organized football began to clash with the commoners game in schools. Football clubs were also starting to pop up around England, but competition was difficult and required the two opposing sides to either come to a mutual agreement on the rules or to play two matches by each team's preferred set of rules. This need of unified rules became apparent to a group of London football clubs in 1863. This need would be the reason that the Football Association would be founded that very year. On October 26, 1863, a number of London clubs sent their captains and representatives to a meeting at Freeman's Tavern in Lincoln's Inn Field. The aim of this meeting was to come up with a common set of rules that would allow inter-club competition in London. The 12 clubs in attendance consisted of Barnes, Blackheath, Percival House, Kensington School, the War Office, Crystal Palace, Blackheath Proprietary School, The Crusaders, Forest, Sibiton, No Names, and Charterhouse School, who would not vote in proceedings. The representative of Barnes, named Ebenezer Morley, proposed the creation of the Football Association and the vote passed 11 to 1. The group met a number of times until they finally decided on a set of rules on December 8, 1863. However, this set of rules would not be in exact compliance with modern football. It would provide a platform under which England could unify the sport, eventually becoming the sport known in England today. By the year 1868, 30 clubs made up the FA, and other football associations were beginning to pop up around England. However, the FA wasn't the only football organization at the time, Sheffield being another of note. As time went on, the game became closer and closer to the modern game because these organizations came under the FA as the governing body of football. By the 1880s, the FA had grown from a group of clubs to a group of local and county associations. One of the reasons the Football Association did so well in its early years was due to the creation of the FA Cup, a knockout style competition between football clubs. The inaugural FA Cup was held in 1871 to 1872 and was won by the Wanderers who beat the Royal Engineers 1-0 in London. The first competition in 1872 drew 15 teams to compete and by 1884, 101 teams would enter the contest. 
In the 1880s and 1890s, many clubs were created across England, some of the most prominent of them in London. Due to the game's popularity and a number of investors recognizing potential in the game, football started to become a professional sport. A great example of this was Henry Norris, who bought Arsenal Football Club in 1912 and transitioned it to the dominant team it remains today. The FA paved the way for ventures such as this in 1885 when they amended their rules to allow for footballers to be paid by their clubs. At this time, football was arguably recognizable as the game England's people love today. The game would continue to evolve, but the groundwork was laid for the modern game. It is important to note upon concluding this story, however, that football's development was not the result of mere chance or football's sheer popularity. Rather, football acted as a barometer to England and developed alongside the country. The Industrial Revolution brought many different people together, creating a need to unify the game under a single set of rules. Football was once separated by social class, but now it is enjoyed in England by people of all backgrounds. Education drove the game as schools and universities created common sets of rules for its students to play under. Football's development was caused by many different factors in England, and I came to realize that this only enriches the historical story as well as England's claim to football as their sport. Thank you.